Hello, fabulous person, Beate Shalet here, the growth architect. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show, where we bring you cutting edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts, and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. Welcome back. This is Beate Schlett, the Growth Architect. Today, I am not going to have a guest. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something that I'm personally incredibly passionate about, and that is strategy. I'm going to explain to you what strategy is, different types of strategies, and why it is so absolutely critical for you to have it in your business and to understand how to utilize this so that you can grow, build, and scale your business, grow your authority, scale your impact, do all those things that we always talk about. One of the uh, podcast interviews I was on recently said to me, all right, Beate, here's the deal. Everybody always talks about what strategy is and how to use strategy, but nobody can really explain it. So I'm going to first explain to you the concept of strategy in general, and then I'm going to break it down. So a strategy basically is when you know a point that you want to go to, and then when you know where that point is, you reverse engineer it into the different steps that are going to get you there. As an example, if you have ever been to New York or Paris or London and you have wanted to use the subway or the tube to go from here to there, the first thing that you do is you go to the map in the station and you find the red dot because the red dot always tells you this is where you are. Then, because you have predetermined where you want to go, Empire State Building, Piccadilly Circus, London Bridge, whatever that might be, and you are now looking at to the point of where you want to go. Then you map out how you're going to get there. So you could, you know, take this train or that train. Sometimes you take a bus or you may think it is too much trouble. And now you go back out, you get a taxi or you might walk some of the way. So those are the strategy. That's the strategies to get there. That's the goal you want to achieve. And then the sub strategies or tactics um, are the pieces that are going to be needed to actually get there. So in business, this is very much the same idea is your first objective is when you're designing a strategy is like, where am I even go going? If you don't have that, you don't need a strategy because the, the, the strategy is not working. And the second piece is then when you identify, you know, after you've identified your, your goal, now you identify where you are at your starting point. And you want to be honest here and say, okay, where am I? What are my numbers saying? What am I really doing? How is my business doing? How am I moving forward? And so you have these two markers, the beginning and the and the starting point, right? Then you figure out how to reverse engineer. So let's say you're making $100,000 today or a million dollars today, and you want to make $500,000 or $5 million, then you will have to look into what you're doing today. That's your starting point. You know, you're making a hundred or 500,000 and you want to get to a million or $5 million, right? So, so the strategy now is to reverse engineer. If I need to 10 X my result, what would that look like? What do I have to 10 X in the way I do business to get to this particular result? If you're already working 60 hours a week, there is no 10 xing that because you cannot work 600 hours a week. It's just physically not possible. So you're going to have to invent strategies that then 10 x this with different pieces. That's what the strategy piece is all about. Then once you have the, you know, the overall strategy, let's say you want to get to $5 million, you want to 10 x your business, then you need to figure out what are the smallest steps to get there. And those are then all these sub strategies and uh, tactics that need to be implemented to be going there. Um, the interesting part sometimes that I find, I had an interesting conversation with someone who said there can only be like one strategy is a singular, it's not a plural. And to me, um, I don't have an argument over that there has to be a main strategy. There has to be a main strategy. 
but on whether or not you want to call it sub strategies, we call it sub strategies because our goal is to have you understand with this podcast, the business growth architect show that you need to implement different strategies at different times that you get so, so um, comfortable with it that you're going to be okay to do a, a strategy per quarter that are fitting into your overall main strategies. If the main strategy is to 10 X your business, and now we're looking at the sub strategies, then every quarter you do something else. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just one second. Just want to make sure that I started to really dive into this piece of the language behind it. A tactic is an execution. A strategy is sort of the goal with the steps involved in it. But within that, there are different ways to discuss it and formulate it. So don't be too concerned about what somebody calls it. It's a personal preference. As long as you understand the concept, you are good. So let's talk about who needs a strategy. I mean, if you're in business, you need a strategy. So you really do need to be able to understand what those pieces are that you need to grow your business. So um, now let's go into the piece of does this even work? So we have clients that we've worked with here at The Growth Architect where we've taken um, their stuff, we built the systems, we developed their strategies, and they went from literally zero to hundreds of thousands of dollars in business, or they you know, closed five, six figure deals within days after they left here. And why is that? Because when you finally have clarity over what you're doing, which is, which is what we do with strategy systems and authority, that's what really helps you to move the needle. And the way the entire system is laid out is that first you need the strategy that is the uh, what you are doing. Then you need to build the systems that is the how you're going to get there. And then you need to build the authority, the client attraction system. And that then identifies who you're going to need in the client and prospecting and the lead generation and the conversion and the sales to actually achieve these kinds of goals. It's a very simple system. It's a simple triangle. Each one of these sides is equally important. So for those of you who've never heard about me or this is the first time on the podcast, thank you so much for listening or thank you so much for watching on our YouTube channel. And um, I am original from Germany. I'm a German immigrant. I came here um, many, 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 many years ago. I have a photography degree. I come from the creative arts. I'm used to working with visionaries, with non-conforming people, with big ideas, you know, a lot of crazy people, fabulous, crazy people, which I absolutely love and adore because I do believe that um, helping people that have these ideas to land the plane is a really, really powerful thing. And I've found that when I was going through my photography training and then I I was going to be a photographer that I somehow naturally was better at the business side of things. It came really easy to me. So I I moved into being a photo editor at Elle magazine and I did that for a little bit. I didn't like that all that much. And then I immigrated to the United States and became a photographer representative and a still photography producer. I work with clients like Mercedes-Benz, Levi Strauss, BMW, Homeboy, I mean, a lot of, lot of international clients and very proudly so had a phenomenal time. And then I eventually moved on to uh, start sharing these uh, pieces that I have learned after I went through what I refer to as a decade of bad luck that includes fires, floods, riots, earthquake, a tsunami, a lawsuit, now a pandemic, and uh, just having to keep getting back up again and again and again and again. And my passion is to give you shortcuts and the insights that it takes to get that goal achieved in the fastest possible way. I believe that we really need to be very clear that when we are going out in business 
that there are different moments in how we build our career. I built and sold a business to Bill Gates. I'm a self-made multimillionaire. Um, you know, I was a single mom, an immigrant, and uh, went through a tough divorce, raised my daughter by myself. My daughter is now 30. She told me to tell you that she's not a small child anymore, not to worry about her. She just got married herself. But the story is the story. The story is a story that probably many of you can relate to that there is a lot of hardship. Nobody gave me anything. You know, my story is not the princess story. I didn't wake up a princess. Nobody handed me a gift. And then nobody gave me the the the, the, the queen crown one day. I fought for everything. I learned the hard way. I made a lot of very expensive and fabulous mistakes. And I'm here to really share the story. This part of my my journey, my joy more is more around you know, really sharing the information and seeing you succeed because that is how we as a company identified our goals this this year where we changed our mission and vision statements around making sure that when you make your impact, that's how we make our impact. It is measured by that. So if we don't help you, then we are failing at what we set out to do. So it's, it's pretty straightforward and very simple. Um, so let's go back to strategy and talk a little bit more about why it matters so much and what some of the lessons were that I learned. So number one, there is an external necessity for you to tell people what your strategy is because you're going to have to tell your clients who you are and where your business is growing to. Then there is an internal piece where you have to tell your team what they're working toward what that means and how they're going to do it and where they're going. So for example, when we talk about Ritz-Carlton, that the Ritz-Carlton employees are empowered up to a certain amount to make discretionary dis um, decisions on their own because they are being very well trained in the overall vision and mission of the company, which is to create the best experience for their guests at any hotel possibly available. And because they are so clear about that, it doesn't have to be micromanaged. It allows people to make independent decisions. That is why your overall strategy matters so much is because you need to be able to articulate that. The other aha moment that I had is when I was going through this decade of just adversity and difficult times, I realized that other people have done already what I was trying to do and that it probably was wiser for me to uh, learn from others who already did what I was trying to do instead of trying to figure this out from the get-go. And that brings me to really recognizing uh, the pieces of the strategy that we are teaching. It's all shortcuts. We obsess over what is the fastest and easiest way to get there. How do we take these complex ideas, break them down into executable steps on whether we do our signature growth system, whether we do our optimal alignment uh, growth strategy, or whether we turn on the lead generation piece through our authority platform building uh, concepts the fastest way. And we try all these pieces ourselves to make sure that that actually works. So when strategy doesn't work, so what happens? Well, what I see with entrepreneurs, and maybe you're one of them, is that you may have a lack of trust to believing other people out there because you had bad experiences. You may think that this may not work for you, and you might be having been one of those people who bought something from somebody who sounded really good, but then they didn't do what they're selling and then it ends up not working. And you may be one of those people who keeps investing into things, but without the proper strategy. And this is something I really, really, really want you to listen to. Without the strategy, don't invest in anything because you don't know if it's in the strategy. So what I see a lot is that people are buying the product launch formula or they're buying the quiz or the funnel hacking or they're buying the speaking from stage, the selling from stage, the 
the lead generation piece, the Facebook uh, strategies that buy, 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 but they don't know how that fits into their overall strategy. So this is the misconception. So stop buying stuff. You only want to buy stuff when you have your overall strategy determined because then and only then can you determine on whether the pieces that you need are actually fitting into that strategy. And I've said this example before, and I don't know if you've heard it, but when we looked into a Facebook strategy and we we actually made an investment into a mastermind. And what we had found is that the people that are reacting to these Facebook groups or how to monetize Facebook groups we're really not our target audience because our target audience are six, seven figure entrepreneurs that are out there that are already running their business. They don't have time to be on Facebook and answering questions like, tell us what you're doing in one sentence without saying, uh, saying what you do. You don't have time for that. So that didn't work for us, but we tried it because we wanted to see what these strategies looked like. And when we saw that this does not fit into our overall strategy, because it doesn't bring us the clients that we need, we immediately stopped it. So buying a thing is not a strategy for you. So you need to absolutely stop that. So let's sum up this part of the podcast here today. Strategy is when you reverse engineer your goal and you break it into smaller sub strategies, tactics, and steps. This is your what are we going to do? So the key main strategy, let's talk about that a little bit because I explained to you that there's a main strategy to move to. This main or key strategy should identify what is the business model, what is the business goal, and how are you going to get there? Then once you have that determined, then you look at the different types of other strategies that are out there. I mean, there's literally hundreds of strategies and every function of your business needs to have a strategy or a tactic in place to make sure that the pieces that you need for your business are properly aligned. And I'm going to take you through some of these. This is a couple of examples. Those are not all of it. It depends on what kind of business you are having. So the first thing is you need a lead generation strategy. Where are you going to get your leads from? How, how, how are you going to get in front of people? How are you going to get them into your pipeline? Then there needs to be a sales strategy. It's like, what is your strategy to sell? Uh, what's the conversion? What's the products that you are selling them to? What what what's what does it solve? There has to be a nurturing strategy for people that don't buy immediately. How do you stay in touch with them over a prolonged period of time and nurture them? Then you need to have a strategy on how you close people. And then what happens if you don't close people? Where do they go? There has to be a consistent outreach strategy, marketing. How do you manage your production, your operations, your delivery process of the customer experience? What about your financial strategy, your HR, your culture? What are the KPIs? What are the measurables? What's the strategy to keep the business accountable and the people that are working in your business? What is your social media strategy, advertising? And um, that is just to name a couple of pieces that are really important for you to look at and say, if I am now having a goal to 10x my business and you are not having enough leads, right? When you want to 10x your business, you need to 10x your leads and you need to 10x your conversion and you need to 10x your everything. Then that means if you're not having enough leads, then your first strategy for the next quarter should be lead generation. And then when you figure out that you're not selling well or your conversion should be better, then you need to figure out how to sell. And then that should be the strategy for the quarter that comes after that. So get into this mindset of constantly pu pushing these strategies forward. And again, that's what we have this podcast for. We are here to help you to understand the different types of strategies. We've had people on this podcast that talk about pricing about SEO, about mindset, about production, pr productivity, innovation systems. We've had a little bit of everything. So you want to listen to these things and then 
look at it from the perspective of, is this a strategy that would help me in my main key strategy? Would it support some of what we're doing? Because that's what we set out to achieve for you. So the uh, how to make strategy work for you. The best way to think about this is, again, state your outcome. What do you need to learn to get that outcome? So if you need to 10x your company, then you need to learn how to 10x your company. And then you look into, as I just said, the sales, the lead generation, and all the pieces that go into it. And you figure out what is the one thing that you want to master immediately that will get you the greatest return on investment. So social media is very unpredictable and it is very hard to measure results unless you throw a whole bunch of ads at it, especially right now with having algorithms change. So if you are generating leads, you need to figure out what it is that you can do to bring the people in the pipeline to 10x. So let's say if you get 10 leads a week right now, 100 leads a week, then in order to 10x that, what do you need to do to get that? Do you need more people? Uh, is it a people strategy? Is it a system strategy? Is it an ad strategy that's attached to that? So that's how I want you to think about this. How do I how do I 10x this? And then you keep fine tuning and improving this until it works, or like in the example in our Facebook strategy, until it's clear that it's not working. And if it's not working, then you're gonna just let this go. And um, we are going to think about this for you now, you know, if we were to evaluate this and say, okay, what's your main objective now for next year for your business? Where do you want to go? If I were to give you a pen and paper and say, okay, let's break this down into four quadrants, what would those four quadrants be? And then you probably would say finding more clients because it's what everybody says then or improving sales, however you articulate that. And then um, improving your bottom line. And then you look at, well, what do you need to, what do you need to learn to do that? So number one, if you need to find more clients, that's your client attraction machine. So you need to build a client attraction machine. So we are offering four different strategies for that right now. One is an executive roundtable strategy. The other one is a podcast guesting. The other one is a podcast hosting. And we do an Instagram strategy as well. So these are the four pieces that we are really bringing in most of our leads right now uh, because we, we have to do what works. And if you are going to uh, go down that road, then you need to figure out where your clients are you know, some of our clients, we've we've helped with very guerrilla style strategies. We have a researcher on our team that we uh, make available for our clients where then the researcher then figures out certain stores or certain industries or certain people that you then can connect with and start building collaborative or partnership relationships to kind of get to that next level. But that depends on the business. And there are, you know, every business is a little bit different. Uh, we work with a lot of service businesses, but when you um, when you think about these strategies, you always want to make sure that your money generating activities are at the forefront because without money or cash flow, you are dead in the water and we want you to be successful. So don't get caught into up in, in the content management and in the social media posting if you do not have the clients, if you need the clients, then I want you to figure out what the client attraction system is before we go social media, because the client attraction system, let's say you were to go into an executive roundtable strategy on LinkedIn, then we knew exactly on how we need to utilize that on social media to promote that strategy. So then it's not a content strategy, then it's a broadcasting strategy, a maximization strategy, of something that we are already doing. So these are just a little shifts in your head where sometimes I feel when people say, you know, I, I have so many, so many pieces of content that I'm not utilizing or that I'm not using, but at the same time, 
then you you know just throwing content out without a plan without an overall strategy doesn't help you anything you need to know why you're putting certain things out and they have to fit in that overall strategy so if i'm talking about three things system strategy client attraction system you know authority platform building then everything I talk about needs to be within those three parameters. Everything I offer needs to be within those three parameters. So we that's why we really don't get involved with when it comes, you know, our on our podcast guesting, for example, or podcast hosting. That's why you will never hear somebody who is coming from the nutrition industry or isn't dating or on on fitness, because that's just not something that will help you in in our in our worldview of strategic growth, right? You might be a fitness business, but we are not focused on that. We are focused on business strategies that are universally ap applicable for that. So we have narrowed very clearly what we are going after, who we going after, who we want to target, and who we want to attract. And subsequently, everything else falls under that. And I want you to do the exact same thing. So the biggest important thing for you then is to figure out where are you going to start? What is the number one thing that you need to be starting on today that will give you the biggest, biggest bang for your buck? And if you have a business and you don't know if your business is um, stuck somewhere or it's not growing, you may want to check out our complimentary uh, business growth blocker quiz. You find it at growthblockerquiz.com. It's also in the show notes, growthblockerquiz.com. And within a couple minutes, three minutes, you'll find out exactly on whether you need a system, a strategy, or an authority platform. We set this up for you because we want to help you. We're here to really help you drive your business forward and make you get to that next level. So I hope this has helped you to understand strategy a little bit better. If you have any comments or questions, reach out to me. I always love to hear from you. Connect with me. On, um, we are all over social media. And uh, let me know what you're taking away from this episode. And with that, I thank you very much. It has been, um, as we are just about to complete our first full year of weekly episodes, it has been an absolute honor and pleasure to share this information with you. I thank you for being here. I thank you for being such an awesome guest. And if you like this show, share it with one other person that needs to hear this and uh, leave us a, a five-star review and subscribe to the podcast. It really helps us to grow and reach more people with information on how to help more people to get what they want. And with that, I remain ever so gratefully Beate Chalet, your growth architect. And thank you and goodbye. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Beat Chalet, the growth architect, and goodbye.